If you have high arches and suffer from foot pain, pressure point type pain in the ball of your foot or in the heel of your foot, these are some of the things that you can do to address that. Hey, I'm Dr. Ryan Peebles. I'm the founder of Core Balance Training, and this is a video on the foot. If I wasn't a specialist in lower back pain, I would specialize in the feet. I'm gonna show you my routine, the things that I've done to heal my feet and be able to avoid foot surgery when it's been recommended to me by a surgeon. So I have a history of foot problems in both feet related to having high arches, and I've done a lot of work on my feet because I've had a lot of problems with my feet. Part of my foot problems have been having a lot of pain across the ball of my feet. It's called metatarsalgia. It's where the heads of the metatarsal bones get really painful. And I've also had plantar fasciitis. I've had Achilles tendonitis. And I've also had splay foot, which related to the whole full body muscular imbalances that I've had in my past. I've learned a lot about the feet. Let's teach you a little bit about why high arches can lead to foot problems. When you have high arches, you have less surface area of your foot in contact with the ground. But when you have less contact with the ground and you have the same amount of weight going through, force going through the foot, smaller contact points mean higher amounts of pressure, pressure points in the foot. And so you have a ton of pressure in this small contact area, whereas somebody with more flat feet would have that pressure spread out and it's less pressure points. So when you have this kind of pressure in these specific points of your feet, you're taking 10,000 steps a day, boom, 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 hammering your foot, you get a lot of bruising. There's a couple ways you can address high arch feet. One, you can get arch supports put more surface area, contact area on the foot. And so it spreads out those pressure points. That is a solution that if you choose to do, you most likely will develop a dependency on it for potentially the rest of your life. I have used arch support in the past to as a temporary tool to heal my feet but I strategically weaned off of the arch supports. So what did I do to avoid arch supports? The goal is to help break down these high arches. And so one of the best ways to break down high arches is to massage the tissues in the arch. And so I have put a lot of effort in over the years into lowering my arches so that I have more contact and surface area with the ground. Notice I don't put the ball of my feet on the rock. That's actually the painful part of my foot. That's the part that has too much contact and too much pressure points. So I aim for the arch of my foot to go on the rocks and it feels good. There's lots of opportunities. If you're just walking in a city or through a neighborhood, you can aim for the edge of the curb to go right into your arch. So this is something that I do uh, regularly in my daily life, I'm always trying to get whatever surfaces of the ground to go into my arch as a way to stretch it out. If you have completely flat feet, you wouldn't want to do this. You would want to do some things to help raise the arches of your feet. So it depends what type of feet you have, what your goal is, what we're striving for is normal. So if you have high arches, I've found this rock walking or city walking on these uneven surfaces to be more effective than rolling on a tennis ball because of the weight bearing aspect. This has been one of the most effective things I've done to help my feet is to help lower my arches. And that's, this is the way I do it. Another thing that happens with supinated feet or high arch type feet, the foot is very curvy. So it curves up, it curves down, and then it curves up here, and then the toes come back down. And what happens is if this gets too tight in here, it's called hammer toes. It looks kind of like that. And people who have hammer toes, their toes are stuck in this flexed position and that's not a very healthy way to walk around. It's a lot more healthy to have spread out long toes. If this gets too tight in here, what happens is the fat pad that protects the, the metatarsals actually gets pulled up. 
and it gets pulled out of the way. It's supposed to protect this area of the foot, but it gets pulled up here. You can see I have some fat pad up here where somebody with more flat feet would look like this and that fat pad would be more underneath the foot and it's protecting the bones that are contacting the ground. This is one of the reasons that a more pronated foot or more flat foot is not actually that much of a bad thing. One of the things that I do to my foot to address this fat pad issue, where the fat pad moves out of the way, I use my hands to stretch it back into place. So I open up my toes and I pull it, I pull it, and I feel the stretch underneath my toes right now. I'm stretching my toe tendons and I'm keeping them open and I'm just pulling those tissues back into place. It definitely makes my feet be able to last longer on a long walk. Let's talk about another problem that happens that's very common with people with high arches. People with high arches is the body type that they have typically have tight calf and Achilles tendon muscles. So it's just a, a lot of tension in the muscles around the foot that pull that arch up. It also happens back here. When you have a tight Achilles and calf muscle, it restricts your ankle mobility. So ankle mobility is really important for foot health because you wanna be able to get what's called dorsiflexion in your feet. You want your knee to be able to go over your foot without the heel having to come off the ground. But if this is tight back here, it restricts that. It stops this motion from happening. And if you're trying to walk and this motion doesn't happen, guess what? It's gonna come up and it's gonna bend in the middle of your foot and over 10,000 steps, it's gonna cause inflammation called plantar fasciitis. So you wanna have the mobility going through the ankle for 10,000 steps a day and not being restricted here, causing that motion to have to pull through the plantar fascia and cause micro trauma, micro tears in that fascia. So ankle mobility, dorsiflexion. This is the test. I'll get up to a wall, my toe six inches from the wall. And the goal is to touch my knee to the wall. Oh, I'm a little too tight right now. If I can't touch the wall with my toes six inches away, then I don't have adequate ankle mobility. So I need to stretch. I'll stretch my calf and my Achilles tendon. And then one of the things I teach is pass passive stretching doesn't last. So I'm gonna add an active component where I do a heel raise, and then I'm gonna lift up my other foot and lower myself down into the stretch. So this is an active stretch. It's called eccentric exercise. I'm controlling the motion into the stretch. functionally using the muscle while stretching it. So now I'll do the test again, and I can get my knee to touch the wall. Look at that. And that is an effective stretch. And guess what? Since I added that active component, it's most likely gonna carry over. It's gonna last a little longer because the muscle feels comfortable being in that length because it knows how to function in that length. So now that I have improved ankle mobility. This motion is going to go into my ankle and not repetitively cause trauma into my foot when I'm walking. The last thing I want to talk to you about is toe spreading. Now, I played basketball for 15 years and I stuffed my feet in basketball shoes. It caused my feet to get kind of squeezed together. If you can broaden your feet, you can have healthy muscular control over the width of your toes, you can avoid something like this where the toes actually get forced to spread open through trauma and a tear happens. So after having many years of foot problems, I'm able to walk barefoot or wear shoes. My feet have become quite resilient and I'm able to live the lifestyle that I want and it's taken work. So uh, these are some of the things I, I've learned along the way and hoping to pass them along to you so that if you have high arches and suffer from foot pain, these are some of the things that you can do to address that. I'll see you in the next one and take care. Thank you guys all for being here. Until next time, down on the floor and connect to your core. See you next week.